chocolate chip cookie recipe coming your way and it is mm, yes it is and it's not because i say so but these are very very special cookies they have been around supposedly for about 70 years and they are legendary yes there is a legend attached to it so welcome to this cooking with love channel and these cookies they've been in my household for about three decades only however for my children that they grew up on it they are called neiman marcus chocolate chip cookie and the reason is because yes there's an attachment to neiman marcus uh, supposedly once upon a time someone liked the cookies so much at the restaurant that requested the recipe and they were charged supposedly 250 for it and when the credit card bill came in, it turned out to be a $250. So the person decided to share this legendary recipe with everyone they could before the internet time. Um, I guess the credit cards, believe it or not, they've been about for about 70 years too. So it must have been on the beginning of the history of the credit card itself too. So lesson learned, huh? 250 so here it is your 250 dollars neiman marcus chocolate chip recipe coming your way yes my kids they grew up on it lucky them and if you haven't found this recipe yet oh here it comes your way it's been all over the internet uh like i said i had it in the early 90s uh, i want to say uh one of the friends i had that she shared with a bunch of us this recipe and the legend was slightly different. I guess the legend changes once upon a time stories they do change out there, but uh, it still was called Neiman Marcus chocolate chip cookie recipe. And they are really delicious. Not just because I say so, I keep telling you this, but if you haven't made them yet, you have to make them. Um, giving you a heads up early start the holidays um, there is always some kind of uh, thing to celebrate out there it's always good to have them I'll give you a couple tips what's what because I like to even freeze them and have it ready when I need to nice and fresh and hot coming out of the oven your way but also I wanted to remind you don't forget to check us out small home of good prepping has a couple different stores already my husband and I we're running them and all sorts of goodies coming your way he has his solar stuff and all sorts of cool hunting gadgets and you name it and yes even jewelry just like you saw it but here it is this is what you're waiting for let's cook <laughs> this recipe is really just the typical really uh, ingredients most of them but of course uh, we'll put them all together and we are starting with a cup of room temperature butter unsalted and make sure it's room temperature like i said one cup of regular sugar and one cup of brown sugar and we are going to cream the uh, butter and the sugar together um, use just a regular hand mixers or stand stand up upright mixers the only advice i'll give you at this point you might want to use a big enough bowl to handle all your ingredients because this is will be where all the ingredients they'll be combining together so start with something nice and big and we will be putting them in together as we go and you see that butter is nice and soft uh, that's the key to make it nice and creamy when you're combining it with, with the sugar and believe it or not I even made them with just with brown sugar and mm-hmm yep they are nice and gooey that way too so it is up to you maybe you have your own version of making them so don't forget to let me know leave us a comment here everybody is looking for all these cooking tips uh, so here you have it uh, about a few minutes five six seven minutes of mixing depends on the temperature of the butter and you should be all good to go once butter and sugar are nice and creamy you see how creamy everything is already uh, we will be adding eggs to it and uh, try to keep it in mind all the ingredients it is helpful if they are all room temperature so your eggs as well we are using two eggs and one teaspoon of vanilla uh, however i like to add these eggs one at a time and just mix it uh, to combine it with uh, with the butter and and the sugar and 
really, this recipe is really easy to make it. Uh, um, you might even have all the ingredients on hand. If you don't, I highly recommend it for any occasion. It, it, really, it really is something good to have it on hand, like I said, because I like to even have them frozen. So if you have a company coming and you don't have anything um, to serve them, oh my gosh, what a treat for that glass of milk, for that cup of tea or coffee, and here you have it. So now once this is all combined, we'll be adding a mix of the dry ingredients to our butter, sugar, and eggs mixture here. And of course, yes, vanilla. Uh, so we are using actually oats here, but the oats are blended. Make sure the finer, the better. I highly recommend to do that. Two cups of blended oats, not the whole oats. After blending, you need two cups of oats and two cups of unbleached flour, one teaspoon baking powder, one teaspoon baking soda, and half a teaspoon of salt. Um, you will mix all these dry ingredients together to make sure everything is uh, well mixed because that will be going later to, to the rest of the ingredients. This recipe also calls for about a cup, cup and a half of blended walnuts. However, here I didn't use it. It's my husband's fault. I have to admit it. He doesn't like it. Uh, he doesn't care for walnuts, but you, I'm sure, will go for it. So mix all the dry ingredients well together because we'll be adding all this to our creamy butter. And those, they just have to be mixed very well. Like I said, that baking soda needs to get combined with it. And we are using also three types of chocolate here. Uh, that you are adding also to that flour and um, all, all that is going in that one big ball. You see, that's why I'm saying all that ball needs to be able to handle all your ingredients here. So we are adding two types of chocolate chip cookies and also we are grating a milk chocolate bar that I highly recommend to put it in the refrigerator. Four ounce milk chocolate bar, uh, candy bar that is grated and six ounces of dark chocolate chips, six ounces of semi-sweet chocolate chips, and you are all chuckled up. <laughs> Ch chocolate up. <laughs> yes, you see, there is a lot of goodies still going into our recipe here. So all that gets mixed in, but again, I found that that, that bar was easier to grate it on, uh, on the grater when it was cold. Uh, because it, it wants to melt in your hands. So you might have to do it um, uh, maybe in a couple of stages if that, that's the case. But uh, once I put it in the refrigerator, I'm telling you, it is really so much easier. And also I use um, a little bit uh, of this type of grater too. I found it, it's easier too. Um, when you do this, uh, then uh, the really, really fine, uh, I'm talking about the standing grater, I found it that it, it's really uh, a little bit more difficult for me anyway. So uh, this one really comes handy and does a really good job to grate all that chocolate for, for this recipe. Because all that gets mixed in into the flour and um, all that baking soda and baking powder mixture as well. And like I said, bunch of these chocolate chip cookies and you can buy, uh, uh, I mean, chocolate chips, but you can also buy um, the chunks. Uh, you can really get creative with this recipe. I've made it with uh, milk chocolates and, and, uh, and the darker chocolates. So keep it in mind, this is something that you can tweak yourself. The recipe I'm giving you the way the recipe calls for, but I've made it numerous different ways. So yes, we are all combining all that together. But if you see your mixture is chunky, lumpy like this, that is totally okay. As a matter of fact, you don't wanna kinda like over mix it. Um, it is okay to be just mixed enough, but not really over mixed and get all the way to the bottom because a lot of uh, the dry ingredients, that's where they're gonna be sitting. And you just wanna have everything semi-combined here and uh, mixing in all your chocolate and all that flour and all that butter uh, to be able to make um, the round balls that we will be making eventually to make the cookies. You see, I, I'm gonna even show you here, this is already enough uh, to create these balls, but we are not done. 
<laughs> there is something more to it you see you you can already create these nice round balls it, it does stick together so no worries here because all will be just fine but at this point the recipe actually tells us to put all that mixture into refrigerator refrigerator at least 30 minutes or so you can even keep it up to 48 hours and supposedly there is more flavor the longer you keeping um, in the refrigerator so yes just cover it up and put it into in the refrigerator so you see the thing is you can make that the day before very easily and not get yourself overwhelmed for holidays or whatever that you are trying to get things um, done together because this is exactly what this recipe is calling for of course if you are in the rush no harm done i'm sure too they will be delicious so once they've been in the refrigerator depends on how big you want to make them i kind of like them big i like them jumbo size i don't like my cookies little and i don't like them too flat so i'll tell you what else i do so uh if you are using regular size of uh, uh, ice cream scoop that's about how big they will be if you get that scoop to be nice and heaping and just combine them together um, by hand into a, these nice even rolls they are bigger than the golf balls here just for some kind of reference and out of this recipe to make it exact i came up with 21 uh, cookies but i came up uh, a lot of times with less because i made them a little bit bigger so it, this is really flexible to be safe i recommend to bake six at a time on a regular baking sheet that uh, you lay it with a parchment paper and guess what the rest of it it's great for freezing and like i said you can just toss them up in the oven and you have a gorgeous smelling and tasting dessert all over again so that's what i do i don't bake them all at once most of the time uh, I mean, of course, if you have company, then of course you would be making more. So we are preheating our oven to 375 Fahrenheit, 190 Celsius. And if they are frozen, they will be cooking longer. If they are not frozen, of course, they will be cooking quicker. So if the dough is warm uh, and you never put them in the refrigerator, they will be cooking quicker. But that 10, 15 minutes or so, and oh yes, nice and golden you want them to be and just soft uh, to touch on the top when they are coming out of the oven to be just enough uh, softness there because that's how they come up to be nice and uh, gooey and chewy. So if you are cooking them, however, frozen, most likely depends on, the, on on your ovens too most likely they might have to cook closer to the 20 minutes range or so so you don't want to burn them but you want to make sure that they have that nice light rim on them when you are uh, watching them uh, coming out of the uh, the oven so they are nice nice brown on the bottom and they are not burned either so again, keep it in mind, if you are cooking them from being frozen, yes, you will have to cook them a little bit longer. Again, depends on the size of the cookie and it depends on um, uh, if they were frozen or not. Because if the cookie is bigger, of course, you know, the, the cooking time will be a little bit more. So here you have our delicious cookie. Don't forget our small home of good pre prepping website and check us out. Like I told you, there is a lot of goodies. They are getting posted a lot of times, even on a daily basis. If you are um, in, the, in, in the mood to check us out, please do so. Give us feedback as well. Love to hear from you. And I know you will enjoy this cookie because we have enjoyed them, like I said, for close to 30 years now. And they've been a staple for every Christmas. It was a must. <laughs> yes, and my kids are blessed to have this recipe. And I know you will be making them too. Look how delicious. Look how thick they are. If you want them to be thinner, they will be thinner if they are not from the free freezer. So if you are taking them from the freezer, just let them sit in the room temperature a little bit more. But like I said, I like them nice and thick like this. I like them nice, nice and big like this. And my family did too. And uh, you see the bottoms are just, just enough of that color on the bottom as well and they are they are truly delicious so i know you will enjoy them 
if you haven't come across the Neiman Marcus chocolate chip cookies, here they are coming your way from my kitchen and subscribe so you don't miss another chocolate chip cookie recipe that is very similar to that one that I just might put out there for you as well. So thank you for watching. And oh, by the way, August 4th is a chocolate chip cookie day. So you better be making those on that day as well. Thank you. Have a blessed one.